The number of COVID cases and hospitalizations continue to spike in the United States. The daily average for hospitalized COVID-19 patients is now more than 100,000. That's higher than any previous surge, with the exception of last winter's before most Americans were eligible for the vaccine. For the first time since March, deaths have risen to an average of more than 1,000 per day. In the last two months, hospitalizations have increased by nearly 500 percent nationwide, particularly across the South, where ICU beds are filling up and vaccination rates are very low. Florida has more people hospitalized with COVID than any other state, more than 17,000. Texas has the second most. Joining us now, Associate Medical Director of the Emergency Department at Tampa General Hospital, Dr. Jason Wilson. He's Associate Professor at USF Health. Dr. Wilson, thanks for being with us this morning. What does it look like in your hospital in Tampa right now? Yeah, I just worked an entire night shift in the uh, COVID part of our emergency department, and we continue to see very high volumes. We've reached kind of a steady state of a pretty high volume, about 240 patients in the hospital at any given time. And I admitted about 15 patients last night, did the same thing the night before. And again, these are mostly unvaccinated patients. I only admitted one vaccinated patient over this entire period of the weekend. So what are you seeing in terms of ages, in terms of what kind of patient is there, is in the hospital? Because we know vaccination rates nationally in Florida, even across the South, are very high for older people in this country. So what's the profile of the patient you're seeing? Yeah, if you go back a year ago to last summer, what we saw was mostly elderly patients, people in their 70s, people with a number of other comorbidities, things like diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, we, we, we would think about all those comorbidities last year and try to figure out the risk for how sick a patient was going to get. But if you compare that to this year, what you see instead really is that the biggest risk factor for whether you get sick or not from COVID is vaccination status. So we're seeing younger patients who are unvaccinated. And again, it's really are you vaccinated or not predicts how sick these patients are going to get. The things like diabetes, high blood pressure, being overweight, those are just secondary to once we figure out vaccination status. 15 to 20 years younger right now is the average age. If you pull out statewide, so you're talking about what's happening in your hospital in Tampa. Cases are spiking in Florida. What does it look like broadly in Florida and what do you do to mitigate what's happening in other hospitals across the state? Yeah, you see something very similar going on in the rest of Florida right now because, again, our vaccination rates are not uh, where we need them to be. And we also have not really been great at a lot of the public health policies that we know we need to take part in when we see these numbers get to the level they're at. You know, we talk a lot about uh, needing cases per day at like the five per 100,000 range to get to a place of containment or to get to a place where we can move about, you know, freely without masks and in indoor crowded places. We're at 100 per 100,000 right now. And so those kind of numbers put us at a place where it's very difficult to go back to uh, being able to move out freely. But most of Florida right now, especially in the Tampa area and other places that are urban, we're seeing really a lot of movement, a lot of indoor crowds again with low vaccination rates and low mask wearing. We're hearing a lot about ambulances being delayed, hospitals obviously overcrowded. Are you seeing that in your hospital? And are there patients who you can't see, who can't be admitted to the hospital or can't get the immediate care they need because of the crowding of COVID patients? Yeah, where we're at right now is that the healthcare system is certainly being stressed. Uh, we're still able to safely take care of patients who are very, very sick, patients who are having things like strokes and heart attacks, but patients who might need to be transported from one hospital facility to the other, those types of transfers are taking a long period of time if they can even happen at all. Patients who maybe don't have quite as urgent or acute type of disease, but maybe have more chronic disease or disability or reasons why they can't uh, you know, do transportation on their own, those types of patients may suffer by long ambulance times, uh, long waits in ambulances, and uh, a lot of problems around that in terms of just ambulances being able to get around the city quickly because they're waiting to unload patients at hospitals, uh, which have in their emergency departments, a lot of patients waiting to go upstairs. Mm. And so this trickles down all the way out to the community. A lot of this preventable if people would get vaccinated, as you say. Dr. Jason Wilson, emergency medicine physician at Tampa General Hospital. Dr. Wilson, thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.